What's going on everybody? So today in this video, what I'm going to be showing is conditional visibility in Airtable interfaces, also conditional editing and conditional view only. So I'm super excited for this. This is, I think, a very commonly requested feature from our clients. So I'm excited to show you in this video. If you haven't met me before, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS, and we build systems like this for tons of businesses all day, every day. We live, eat, and sleep Airtable. Uh, if you need any help with this, check out a link in the description. And if at the end of the video, you want a copy of this base so you can see these conditional components and there may be a hint of a repeatable task system, check out the link in the description and you can get a copy of the base. So if we jump in here, this is an Airtable interface. What we're looking at on the right side is what they call a detail page. This view that I'm looking at is very, very similar to Trello, if you're familiar with Trello. And these are basically cards. This operates very similarly to Trello, where you can like drag things in between. You can go to a different view where you're not looking at it like Trello. Like if I go to a roadmap view, this is a timeline view. Uh, some, some people call this a Gantt view if it had the little things in between. But if I go back to this Kanban view and I click into one of these tasks, down here at the bottom, you'll see there's a bunch of fields here. If I have this box checked, if I have it unchecked, nothing shows. So this is what I want to show you how to do. I have a few different settings baked into this. What I'm going to be showing is how to do conditional visibility. Now, the first thing you should know about conditional visibility is in order to make something conditional, the field you're making it conditional on has to be visible in the interface. From my understanding, that has been true every time I've tried this. So if I in this example, if I click this checkbox, this section shows up for recurring tasks, and this section shows up for advanced visibility. If I uncheck it, all of that gets hidden. So if now I go back in to check it and I want to take this a step further, I know we, a second ago I mentioned we there may be a conditional editing versus not editing. If I look at this description field right now, it's read only. Just for the sake of the demo, I also added it up here so I could say test, test, test. That description shows up down here as read only. So maybe in this interface that I've shared with somebody, I actually didn't have the one up here at the top and I wanted to share read only for that person. What I've baked into this is actually a way where if I change the assignee right here, so I'm going to change it from Javier to Sophia, and you should know just on the back end, and you'll see it pop up. I've put my email on Sophia's contact record. So you see this shows up here. Again, this field is visible on the interface. Now down here in advanced visibility, I can see the description field and it is now editable. So that's pretty cool. Let's see how it's done. If I go up here in the top left, click edit, that's going to take me into the editor mode. Down here, each of these groups, I'm setting conditional visibility at the group level. So I can say for this group, if I click on the group, which you have to click, click very carefully in the white space, I can come over here to visibility and I see this feature is not recommended for hiding sensitive data, but it's only going to be visible if advanced is checked. Within that group, I can set even more conditions. Now the group trumps what's inside of the group. So if I had something about advanced, I don't think it would really apply here because it's just a binary checkbox. Description, this one is marked as editable. And this one is shown if the email right here is the current user's email. So we would often bake in a team hierarchy or a role structure into the database. And so if you're this type of user assigned to this project or this task, you're going to be able to edit the description. But if you're maybe if you're a watcher of this task or you're just like, not on the project, then you're just going to have a read only version of this task. So that's what I have here. The visibility rules are either email does not contain current users email or it does contain. If you're not seeing current users email pop up, then you're using a field that is not either a user field or returning an email field. If you're using a roll up, and you've converted the output into text, it wouldn't show up if you're using an email field, but the field type is single line text, it would also not show up. In this case, I'm using a lookup field, but the field that I'm looking up is an email. 
like the field type, this icon right here is an email field. So it works out. That's how it gives me that option. If I look at this set of conditional block or these conditional fields here, you can see I have a few fields in here that have this little eye icon right here. These fields are conditional within the block as well, but they're just conditional based on this field type. So I say lead time days, only show that if the recurring task type is audit log. Date, only show that if recurring task type is audit log. So this is how this is set up. If you want a copy of this base, check out the link in the description. And if you, for whatever reason, want to learn how to do repeatable tasks in Airtable, go check out the link to the video in the end screen, and it'll be the simplest way to do recurring tasks in Airtable. Thank you.